Hi, kids. Over the winter, I uh, hit a little snow, put the element in a ditch. It wasn't the car's fault, it was my fault. I was going too fast for conditions. When I got the car pulled out, I had the passenger side brake locked up. And when I got this home and got it taken apart to find out why my brake over there was grinding, and it was absolutely grinding, I had assumed that it had just lost the uh, abrasive material off the pad, so I bought a set of pads, I was going to just slap those in and go. Um, but when I got it apart, I found out that the caliper was completely locked up. So, I had an old caliper. It was actually a brand new caliper, but it had been in my shop for years. So I went and dug it out, and I put it on, and it was leaking like crazy. And uh, I'll show you why. This surface right here has to, when you bolt your hose back on here, it has to sit on there perfectly flat. And this has got a little ding in it, so it would never seal. So then I was in a bind. Um, my old caliper was crap and my new caliper was crap, so what was I gonna do? Well, what I ended up doing was taking the guts out of this and putting them in the other one. These are the guts that came out of that one. And you can see this rust ridge around this. That's what causes it to lock up. So today I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild these calipers on your car without taking them off, if you have to. And I'll explain why you may or may not wanna even bother with that. This little bit of surface rust is nothing to worry about. That's normal. We're gonna be replacing these uh, pads. Since I have another set, we'll go ahead and slap those pads in here because I'd like my front end to match. All right, to make it just a little easier to work on this, I'm gonna start the car and turn the wheel and uh, that'll give us a little bit better access to the back side of the brakes. All right, now these two bolts hold your brake to your car. I think those are, a, yeah, those are a 17 millimeter. So let's get 17 millimeter out, get that off of there. Mostly going to try and use hand tools today, just because I think that's probably what you're going to be working with. Oh, oh, or maybe not. Mm. There we go. All right, that one's broke loose. Where's the other one? Mm. It's the old uh, manual impact. Now that it's broke loose, I can ratchet it off. In the bucket. All right. All right, there's our caliper loose, and we can see but these pads are really not in bad shape. They're actually not very old, but since I've got new pads and I put new pads on the other side, I'd like the left side to match the right side. So we'll take these off and save them just in case, because I'm a pack rat and I do stuff like that. Um, but they'll probably end up getting thrown in the trash 10 years from now. Set that caliper up there. I don't want it to hang from the hose. I don't like that ancient hoses they're 20 years old in fact that's one of the projects we probably need to do at some point is replace these hoses with something a little more uh from this century these are the pins let's see if they look like they move good yep that slides that's what you're looking for is for that to slide that's how your brakes work when you mash on the pedal that piston in there, if you can just barely see that rusted edge of that silver piston, that comes out because your foot is applying pressure to the master cylinder, which is pumping fluid down this hose into the back of this. And that pushes that out and it causes this to slide out. And when it does, you have braking action. So you need all of this to move with fairly little effort. This is the hose I was talking about on my other brake caliper. This little flange, this flat surface that it's supposed to mate against was dented and it would not seal. So I had, I drove to work with uh, leaking brakes and almost no brakes, had to use a parking brake to get where I was going. So to give myself just a little more wiggle room on this job, I'm gonna take the uh, brake line loose from the strut and that'll give me a few more inches to play with here. That's what she said. 
sensor's kind of in the way, but there, that gives us a little more room. See, now I can walk around the house with this. Get the backup bucket. Always have a backup bucket. And we'll set that caliper on the bucket. Just about the perfect height for this job. All right, take a look down here. You see that little hole in that seal? What I think happens is in the winter time when they're salting the road, salt gets in there and it, it rusts the edge of this and then it can't slide in and out of the bore properly. The piston gets locked up in there. And that's what causes your brakes to lock up and start chewing up your discs, your pads, all that good stuff. There's only a couple things that can cause a brake caliper to lock up. One of these pins, which we already know are in pretty good shape because we replaced them last year and I can test them right now and see that they're still moving freely. So that's not the problem. So how I'm gonna get this piston out of here is by getting in the car and pushing the brakes. And when I push the brakes with no resistance against this, this piston's gonna pop right out of there. Watch this. Pumping these brakes up like this, you gotta be sure you keep brake fluid in the reservoir. So if you pump it a few times and it doesn't pop out, refill your reservoir, make sure it doesn't run out. Try it again. If we look at the one from the other side, we can see that it's nearly out of the bore, so we could probably pull it out from here. Yeah, see? Here we go. See how that's wobbling around? That means it's barely in there. There it is. Look at how nasty and crud covered that ugly thing is. Wow, okay. Now we want to get the seals out. Little pick tool. Grab that old rusty, nasty seal out of there. And there's a snap ring thing that's in there. I'll have to get that out too. Yeah, that seal is toast, absolutely falling apart. Yeah, look at that nasty thing. Full of holes, probably more hole than seal going on there. Now to get that little metal ring out, I've got to push this in on the edge of that and try and kind of bend it. There it is, see? That's a little snap ring that holds that seal in. That's all of that. The new kit has got one of these, but I'm gonna save it just in case I screw it up. Boy, that is some gross crap in there. You know, 20 year old seal, it's done its job. It deserves its death. So that's the dust seal for the outside. This next piece I'm gonna take out is the actual piston seal. There's that. That's not in terrible shape, but you know, it's a 20 year old seal. So let's put a new one in. So our new parts consist of seals. Um, it actually comes with the little copper rings for putting your brake line back on, but we're not taking the brake line off. So we don't need to use those. Wow, that's just nasty that crap out of there a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and try and get this seal in. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you should go with OEM parts on a Honda. Well, this is one way to do that. You can rebuild your old ones. But I'll tell you this. The aftermarket calipers are so cheap, I don't know if it's worth the effort. I gotta turn this around so I can see it better.
because for the price of the piston and the seals and all that stuff, you could probably buy one of these cheap aftermarket calipers to go in there. This little um, seal here is the one that I find to be incredibly fiddly. Because it seems like it's too big to go in the hole, but it's not. Just keep working on it. All right, there's that seal in. We're gonna put a little hydraulic fluid on it so that it slides easy. Now this is the new piston, brand new. And if I had to, if you really had to, you could clean this one up and put it back in there. Let's say you, uh, you're out in the middle of the woods and your brakes lock up and you're trying to just get back home. You don't have parts. You could sand this down, put it back in there and it should work just fine. All right, so this is just like a dust cover. Let's remember that metal snap ring is gonna go in that edge of that thing. One side of this has a little groove to hold that metal snap ring and the other side does not. So this side, actually let's just say this, the printed side goes in. So if you see the little numbers, that goes on the inside. This goes on the outside. The way that goes, you just snap it on there. Boink. Make sure it's down in the groove. It's got a little groove to catch that. There we go. That's what that should look like. Now this goes in the hole. I need to open up this bleeder so that the air can escape and the piston can go back in the bore. I think I just broke my wrench. This is a cheese ball Chinese wrench. There we go. Wow, that's really tight. We'll have to have that open to bleed the brakes when we're done here anyway. So, there we go. Now that's open. Start working that piston back in. in there now we work this uh, seal dust dust jacket really is what it is um, work that in there all right Get the grass out of there and our new metal piece this is going to go in like this like the original. Turn this up where I can see it a little better. It just snaps down in the edge of that. Make sure it goes all the way in. But also, if you're using this tool like I do, be sure you're not punching holes in the boot. Because that would suck and you would be lame. There we go. All right, that is in all the way around. That's it, guys. That is rebuilt. Now we're going to put in our new pads, put the slide back on. Put it back on the car. These are just the those 10 millimeter bolts that hold this in. No, 12 millimeter. There's our two slide bolts back in. We haven't lost a lot of hydraulic fluid, but we have lost some, so we're gonna have to top that off. Now it's time for the new pads. Oh, they're so pretty. Got a 
gonna get brake fluid all over them. Here's the other. Close up that bleeder so we don't lose any more fluid. caliper back on that's it guys this is the big 14 millimeter jobby this little thing is handy I've made these before out of uh, diet coke bottles and whatnot Just let that hang on there open that bleeder up a little bit now we're gonna go pump up our brakes and bleed. I guess I'll show you my one-man brake pumping job. Um, my wife has to use crutches, and this is one of her old ones, and it's what I use to pump up the brakes and then hold the brakes. Get them pumped up. Now let's push that in and wedge that in the seat. Anything you can find, piece of wood, whatever, curtain rod, it'll do the same job. Be creative. You can figure this stuff out. All right, let's bleed off a little more. You do that till there's no air showing up in this fluid that's coming down. One more time, and I think that'll have it. I think that's got it, kids. We're gonna take it for a test drive. Make sure. Make sure we're topping off the fluid. I use this Liquid Molly brake fluid. Dot four. It is compatible with our system and it's silicone based, so it uh, is less likely to cause rust in your system. I think we're good. Get the last few bolts in. 10 millimeter that holds this brake line to the strut so that it doesn't get uh, snagged. So this is the one that I had in my shop, the Cardon, and uh, I bought it because I had that problem with that caliper locking up. You could tell if your calipers are locking up because when you get out of the car, you feel the wheels. If one of them's a lot hotter than the other, then that caliper is locking up and that heat is starting to radiate through your rim. So again, that little mating surface for the hose has to be perfect or it's never going to seal. It's going to leak, leak, leak. Now, if you take a look at this, what this is, is it's, it's steel and then it's chrome plated and it's chrome plated because it's hydraulics and hydraulics you have a rubber seal that holds against this, and that's all there is. And if this surface isn't almost perfectly flat, it's going to leak. If it is perfectly flat, it won't leak. Here's the one that we just took out, and this one was not locking up, but it still looks pretty gruesome. Not as bad as that other one. The seal, however, was total trash, and the one on the other side looked just as bad. It had chunks missing out of it and everything else. So reasons you may want to do this is maybe where you live, it's difficult to get a new caliper. Or like me, maybe you're just in a bind. You don't have a good caliper, but you've got enough parts to build two bad ones. Well, okay, sort out the good parts, put that together, put it on the car. That's, that's what I did, I didn't have a choice. I don't know that you're saving yourself any work. Did that look like less work than changing a caliper? Probably not, it's probably more work. But in the off chance that you need to know this information, here it is, guys. Next week I'll be showing you a different video about some different stuff, doing some different things. And I'm hoping that we're going to get away from the front suspension on this car because I'm tired of taking it apart and putting it back together. Until next week, this is Clint Searcy saying, you can rebuild brake calipers if you want to. I promise. See you next week.